So today's the day I finally get to sandblast all the epoxy and the paint off the bottom of my boat. But first, I need to go buy some kiln dried sand. So let's go do that. So you might have noticed this is not a Karcher sandblaster, but onto here, where the lance goes, that is where the Karcher lance fits. I'm using this instead of a Karcher machine because I know this drum, which I have put the suction hose into, is filled with water and it's good enough. The pressure created is good enough to feed this because I'm pretty sure the tap here is giving me low water pressure because the old smaller type that you see me use, um, a friend here said that worked for him, that size and the marine engineer used my Karcher sandblaster attachment on his slightly bigger Karcher jet washer and it worked for that but again not as good as what I've seen elsewhere so I'm hoping it's the water pressure issue here and I'm hoping this will sort it but let's get set up so this is the Karcher Lance off my Karcher jet wash I've been told that this machine gives around about 1500 psi and this pipe is 110 bar which is about 1550 psi give or take so this will fit nicely on here so that's the water the lance and now I need to do, so with the lance, you need to push it in, twist it, and then it pops out. And that's the end that's come off it, which is the same as the Karcher jet wash attachment so that goes in pushes down and twists and then there you go but I've been told to make sure that's facing down in comparison to the to the nozzle you don't want that above if that makes sense so there we go uh, let's give it a go
it's coming off really, really well. If I'd had this six months ago, I think I'd be in the water. I'll tell you more about it later, but I spoke to someone who said, uh, going through all the effort to take off the epoxy coating, which the sandblaster isn't taking off anyway, uh, isn't really worth it. But yeah, I'll, I'll talk more about that later. And for now, I'm gonna get rid of all the blue. So there we have it, that's about 13 bags of sand. I bought six and then went back for another eight. Uh, and what you've just seen there is about, including going to pick up the sand and, and do the work, it's probably about six hours work, which is amazing considering I got nearly the whole boat done. I would have got the entire boat done if it hadn't been raining so bad on Saturday, but if I was to go back in time and start again, the way I would have chose to do it is use the caustic soda gel uh, paint stripper. I would have scraped that off best I could or jet washed that off. And then for the final little bit, just to really get in there, I would have used this. You can skip the caustic soda gel stage, but I've, I think you'd use a lot more sand and that caustic soda gel is so cheap. It, I'd rather say it's like £4.42, I think, for a bag of sand. And for £4.42, you can pretty much get all of the caustic gel that you need for the boat. So I would try and get as much off with that as I could, and then just to strip it right back. If you've got an epoxy primer, it hardly touches it. It does show up where it's flaking off and where the uh, where it's not really adhered properly and it's not keyed right. But, and leading on to that, uh, let me know in the comments what you think I should do. I've been told where the paint, sorry, the epoxy primer's flaking off, I should get a random orbital sander and keep sanding back until I've sanded away that flaky bit and I'm on to nicely adhere the epoxy and then just go all over and then everything I'm left with is solid epoxy that's nicely adhered, won't flake off. So then when I copper coat, it's got a good uh, surface to adhere to. Or should I not 
take that risk and sand it all off. I don't know, but let me know in the comments. It's nice to be back doing these videos, so I'll see you next week.